Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. It's currently raining, so if the audio is a little bit irritating, I'm sorry. It's a lot better than when I didn't have this microphone though. A couple months ago, I did an episode on morning routines, the importance of having a good solid morning routine that works for you. And today I wanted to do the kind of sister episode to that episode and I wanted to do evening routines, sleep hygiene, sleep schedule, the importance of having a solid evening routine because it's just as important if not more because your day really starts the night before. You know, if you don't have a solid evening routine or nighttime routine, sleep routine, whatever you want to call it, if you don't have that kind of down, you haven't found a kind of rhythm and a routine that works for you, it's then quite hard to have a morning routine that works because you know, a lot of the purpose of an evening routine is to set up for the following day. So if you've kind of missed the mark on that, do you know what I mean? Then your morning routine suffers and it's kind of the cycle that goes downhill. (laughs) I think your morning routine and your evening routine kind of need to work in harmony in some sort of way. And I've always said, I think it's so important. The main thing is that they work for you. They're not just some things you found online or on Instagram or on TikTok and it's like you've seen someone's perfect morning routine and you've just like tried to follow that exact kind of recipe for yourself. I think they tend to, if you if it's not coming from you, it doesn't tend to stick because everyone is so, so different. And again, like I said in the morning routine episode, if you haven't watched that, it's kind of like, to me, having a good evening routine, having a good morning routine, it's not only to make me feel good and like in my best state as much as I can, but it's also to ensure that I am moving my life in the direction that I want, you know? I think that's one of the main positives to having these kind of routines in place for yourself is, you know, what's the quote? You don't rise to your goals, you fall to your systems. Is that the quote? That basically having a good system in line that works for you, that you can stick to. It kind of keeps your life going in a certain direction that you've chosen, you know, it's it's gonna give you kind of the life that you want because again, like I said in the morning routine episode, your life is how you spend your days, you know? I think it's quite easy to spend a lot of time thinking about what you want with your life, what you want your life to be like, what you where you want it to go and think about all these things when realistically your life is just purely how do you spend your days because your days make up your life so I think having these routines is huge because it ensures that you're actually living a life that you do want and that you're not just kind of you know taking whatever comes your way and just working with you know whatever happens to be there it's kind of like you're taking a bit more control and a bit more initiative over your life and setting a tone for how you want it to be how you want it to feel you know it gives you that agency because the difference between people's morning routines or evening routines is kind of the difference between the people themselves does this make any sense like some people's perfect evening routine will be you know having a shower taking off your makeup doing your skincare like having like a little what they called sleepy girl mocktail and like doing your hair the night before and making your overnight oats and shit and someone will love that and to be honest that's very the kind of thing that I like doing but someone else's evening routine might involve maybe going for a run maybe they like to exercise at night maybe they're really creative in the evening and that's actually when they get a lot of their work done do you know what I mean like I find it interesting because people's little routines and little habits and things that they do because everyone you have routines and you have habits whether you know you do or not they're there you know we're all creatures of habit like and that's why again I think it's important to think about your evening routine and your morning routine because you already have one there's already if you think right now what do you do in the evening obviously it's not exactly the same every night but you will have a routine maybe you sleep at the same kind of time every night maybe you go on your phone quite a lot quite late maybe you eat dinner really late maybe you tend to talk to your friends on your phone maybe you go for a walk I don't know there's already one there is what I'm trying to say it's just I kind of wanted to talk about the importance of making sure that it's one that's working for you one that you're you're doing on purpose like it's intentional it's not just 
again, like I said, you're not just doing whatever happens to be there or whatever feels easiest at the moment. Like you're obviously your your evening routine doesn't need to be a fucking struggle. Like that's not the aim. It's not to find something that takes massive amounts of discipline and is all about grind, grind, grind. I've got to set up for the next day and I've got to do a workout at five a.m. and so I've got to lay out my gym clothes. Like the point to me is not to make yourself suffer. The point is to find that perfect balance between enjoyable and relaxing and soothing to yourself, but also kind of putting in some good habits and routines that are good for you and not just easy and comfortable. You know, it's kind of like half and half situation. Like, you know, I think a lot of the time it's about finding that balance between what feels good to you and what are you kind of looking forward to? Because I do think it's important to have routines that excite you and that you enjoy because like you're meant to enjoy your life do you know what I mean <laughs> you're meant to have fun um I think a lot of the internet is very grind work towards something all the time and sometimes it's like are we forgetting that we're meant to enjoy our lives you know I think having an evening routine that you're like oh, I can't wait to do that later is very important because again things don't stick if you make them too difficult for yourself it kind of has to be in that sweet spot of like it's benefiting me and there's some good healthy habits in there but there's also some things in there that just soothe you and make you happy and like send you off into sleep in a relaxed mindset you know because that's huge a massive part of the point of having an evening routine is because it sets you up for a good night's sleep and your sleep is huge because again you fuck up your sleep you fuck up your morning routine you fuck up your day Sleep is huge, very important. And I always think about the fact that like with children, right, you have to have like a bedtime routine with them because I don't have children, but I imagine they don't fucking settle down unless they have some form of a bedtime routine because they need something to like signal to them that like, okay, it's bedtime, I need to chill the fuck out. Do you know what I mean? Maybe it's like you give them a bath or you read them a story or you like, I don't know, literally just put them in pajamas it's signaling to their brain like okay we're in wind down mode now you know like maybe they have certain things they like to eat before bed like children need structure and they need a bedtime routine and shit because can you imagine having a child and just being like just doing a normal evening thing you're having dinner you're watching tv and then you just go right go to bed they're not gonna fucking go to bed do you know what i mean they need to wind down and to kind of switch from daytime mode to evening mode and we need that too is my point is that now I feel like as an adult it obviously a massive part of it is that we're all busy children like aren't so busy they don't have a full calendar of activities maybe they do but they're not so pressing do you know what I mean you know we have a lot more responsibilities and it feels like a lot less time obviously that's not true but there's just more to do when you're an adult but for me I don't think it should feel like a luxury that like you have an evening routine to settle down. I think it's so unhealthy to go from work mode, busy mode, to just putting yourself into a bed physically and just shutting your eyes and you're like, sleep. That's A, you're gonna have shit sleep. B, you're probably gonna wake up tired. Even if you sleep for eight hours, you're gonna wake up tired because that's not, obviously as a one-off, if you had like a fucking hectic day and you just crash, that's fine. But I think if your norm like your normal state that you go to sleep in is just crashing into bed, going from doing all these activities to just going to bed or like lying in bed and going on your phone for ages and then going to sleep. There's no like, like I said, children have this transition period that is very important. And as adults, we kind of, due to the fact that we get busy and also a lot of the time lazy, depends on the situation. Um, we kind of give up on that transition and we just go from A to B and like, like I said, it just, it isn't good for your body, your brain, your sleep, anything. I think having a solid evening routine in a way kind of like ties up the loose ends of the day. Like you're not going to sleep with just a million like open things on your mind, a million things on your brain that you're still thinking about and that you're still like trying to work out and mull over. And it's like, it's like the same thing as if you work from home, it's obviously a lot healthier to have a work area and like a home area, you know, set up some sort of office or like have a certain place you always sit when you're working. Because if you bring that into like your bed, you know, you start bringing your laptop into bed or something, your brain doesn't, it just, it, we're very association based, do you know what I mean? You need to associate things with sleep 
and then you sleep better the same way you associate something with work you're not going to be able to relax there it's just like we're very we work in that kind of way where I think one benefit to having an evening routine is once you start doing it your brain associates it obviously with resting and winding down and going to sleep and it starts to kind of put to bed the issues of the day it starts to tie up those loose ends and you don't go into bed again sometimes you will depends what kind of day you've had but generally you don't go to bed with such an active brain because it's learned okay we're like mentally like we're closing the laptop do you know what I mean we've, we've stopped we're clocking out that we'll deal with it tomorrow like it's no longer an appropriate time to be trying to figure shit out and obviously you can never switch your brain off you're always thinking about things you're always going to be pondering things you can't just have a crazy day and then put on your pajamas and like everything's forgotten I'm aware of that but it definitely does start to calm you down and wind your brain down. Because like I said, in my experience, if I go to sleep quite stressed or quite, you know, my brain is very switched on. I could sleep for hours and hours and I will still wake up not very refreshed because I didn't go to sleep in a calm kind of way. Do you know what I mean? I kind of forced myself to go to sleep and it does feel different it does affect the quality of your sleep, to me anyway, because if I have an evening where I've done something relaxing, maybe I've had a bath, or maybe I went to yoga or something, I sleep so well. Like, I sleep so well. So it definitely has an effect how you spend your evening on your sleep. So obviously, a main perk to an evening routine, a main benefit, a main point to having one, is you're setting up for the following morning. You're making your life easier for your future self. This is always a good thing to be doing, you know? You're setting your morning up for like maximum ease for the version of you that's waking up in the morning. You're not making your own life harder. I think this is why it's so helpful to have an evening routine and a morning routine that work in harmony because your life then becomes a lot easier for yourself because you're constantly kind of thinking ahead of time about how to not make yourself have to suffer. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're always kind of thinking of your future self a little bit, your life is going to be a lot smoother. I find that like if I go to sleep, if I don't, I kind of have a rule where I won't go to sleep if my room's like a mess because it, that affects my sleep quality too. I like, it just it irritates me. I enjoy a clean space and I don't really, I will always make sure my room's like pretty clean and like tidy. I've cleaned it all and like whatever, nothing's just chucked on the floor before I go to sleep, which takes like five minutes, 10 maximum. And I wake up. And I instantly feel that kind of normal, decent, good state. Whereas if I woke up in a messy room, I could instantly tell you my day would be starting on a bad foot. Because I do not like mess. It would annoy me. I would just kind of feel annoyed at myself because I'd be like, what the fuck? And I would just feel kind of gross. So again, your day starts the night before. You know, don't do things that you know are going to piss yourself off in the morning. Because it's just going to have a ripple effect, you know? If you're kind of always thinking in a state of like, I want to make it easier for myself in future, not for myself right now, your life will be a lot smoother. If you're always thinking about current you and what you want and you're kind of biting yourself in the ass, do you know what I mean? Like, as if it's not going to be you that has to deal with the consequence. And I know sometimes we all get a little bit lazy, like maybe some night if I'm fucking exhausted, I'll be like, right... I'm just going to chuck all my clothes in a pile and I'll wake up and I'll sort that out, but I just need to go to bed. That's not the end of the world, you know? I'm not saying every single day I'm, like, fucking perfect, but, like, it's just having that almost, like, compassion and, like, respect. I don't know what the word is, but for yourself of, like, I don't want to make my own life harder. I want to enjoy my life. I want to wake up feeling good because I want to have a nice day. So I'm not going to leave shit in a mess the same way that if you're leaving work and you work at like a restaurant or something you have to close down you know you have to close down in a way that the next person that's coming in can set up from it being in like a decent state you know you have to kind of close down your own evening your own space whether it's making sure you do the dishes the night before so that you don't wake up and have to do your dishes from yesterday night do you know what I mean or like cleaning the surfaces in the kitchen and like all these things that you just kind of do I feel like kind of out of a habit, you just like you clean services, you do the dishes, you shut the windows, you lock the doors, whatever. It's like making sure that you're doing those things for yourself is so important because it seems minor. It does seem minor that like 
I'm just going to leave some plates in the sink. But like you're biting yourself in the ass, do you know what I mean? And you're, it does affect the enjoyment of your next day. So it's always making sure, even if you need like a little checklist that you have like on your wall, do you know what I mean? Of like basic shit. Again, you do that in a restaurant if you're closing down. It's a transferable skill. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just like any system that works for you is huge whether it is laying out your gym clothes setting up some food for yourself in the morning making sure everything's clean like having a playlist maybe for if you know you want to go to the gym in the morning and you know that you generally wake up and think i don't want to fucking go to the gym make yourself a playlist that is exciting because with exercise the music is huge if you have a playlist that you enjoy running to or something you're so much more likely to go running i don't know about you that's definitely my situation. Like, anything. It could be anything. This is what I mean. Like, don't just follow something you found on TikTok. Like, what actually is going to get you to where you need to be, you know? You know, you might not give a shit about having, like, some matching running set. That might not excite you. The music might excite you. So it's like, find what actually works for you. For me, my evening routine, a huge part of it is making my space very cozy when it starts to be evening you know i've had dinner i've like done whatever plans i had if i was going out or i was meeting someone like whenever i'm just in for the night you know what i mean <laughs> i make my room cozy it's like the first thing that i do and by that i mean i turn off like the main light put on all my little fairy lights this is probably when i tend to like make sure it's pretty clean like put things back in drawers like clean my surface my makeup table um hang some clothes up it's generally not that messy because of the fact that i do this every night it never gets that messy but yeah and i would make it cozy light some candles i put on my oil diffuser set the nice vibes you know that is huge and my brain when my room's like that i'm instantly tired because i've done that for fucking ages like probably years i'm not gonna lie i'm a huge like i need to be cozy i cannot sleep if I don't feel cozy <laughs> you know and I have like oils like essential oils I put on my pillow I have a sleep spray that like the smell of that I associate with sleep I listen to podcasts sometimes when I go to sleep most nights and I associate that with sleep like honestly the amount of it that's just association but again you don't rise to your goals you fall to the level of your systems you need habits and systems that work for you and this works for me because it makes me calm makes me happy it makes me sleep which is huge um, you know, I generally as well do my hair the night before. If I have work or anything in the morning, I wash my... I'm an evening shower person, more so than morning. Um, wash, dry my hair, like curl it, sleep with it in like a bun or something so that it's... I wake up and I just have to take it out, run a brush through it and it's done. And that, again, makes me feel so good. When I wake up and my hair's done, my room's clean, you know, my clothes are laid out, whether it's some sort of uniform or it's some sort of gym clothes or it's clothes for the day I don't fucking know some you know I just wake up and I feel already like I'm starting and like the ball's been rolling before I've even woken up because last night I fucking did half of it for myself and I feel so much happier I hate waking up and like my hair's gross my room's a mess like I'm just a bitch in that scenario okay this is, again, not only does it benefit me, it makes me a fucking pleasant person to be around. I would be such a bitch if I didn't have these habits and routines, okay? You need systems. And again, you have them. You have routines already. You just might not be intending to do them, but you do. And some advice from Mel Robbins, my fucking queen. I swear I talk about her all the time. I am obsessed with her. Her advice in terms of when should you be going to sleep? Because obviously that's a big question when we're talking about evening routines and sleep hygiene and shit. What time should you be going to sleep? She says, when do you need to wake up? And like, again, be realistic. If you have work at seven, you don't wake up at half six. Do you know what I mean? When do you actually need to wake up in order to have a, a decent morning routine as well? This is what I mean. They need to work together. Um, like, it's not just when can I possibly push it to the last. It's what will give you enough time to become human and, you know, have your coffee have your shower do your skincare like put on your outfit like do whatever the fuck you like to do in the morning not just like roll out of bed and get out when you actually need to get out of bed to be a happy person <laughs> count back eight hours and her advice is this is when you need to be falling asleep not when you need to be getting into bed so say you've taken it back eight hours and it's 11 p.m that does not mean you get into bed at 11. That means you get into bed at like half 10 or whatever. So it's annoying because you think, fuck's sake, that's actually getting quite early. Like if I 
do the maths, I need to get into bed at what, like half ten or ten or something. That might feel really early. But this is one of the most successful, busy people ever. And she goes to bed at fucking nine o'clock every night. Do you know what I mean? And this is why I listen to everything she says. It's not just that, but like it it's evidence that I don't care how busy you are. And I don't mean this to sound disrespectful because I know everyone has different like lives and do whatever the fuck you want. Honestly, do whatever the fuck you want. Who am I to tell you what to do? But she is one of the busiest people ever. She goes to bed early. She gets up early. She gets loads of shit done. She looks after herself. She does loads of work. She travels. She does seminars everywhere. She has a podcast. She has books. She has all this stuff. She's getting so much shit done and she is not up late. Do you know what I mean? I think for a lot of us, it's like, if you're busy, it's like an excuse of like, oh, I always sleep late because I always have so much to do and I'm so busy and I have to do this and that. And But it's like, there's people doing way more that are going to bed way earlier. You need to work smarter. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I know I might sound like a bitch here. I might sound like a bitch here. Because again, no one's perfect. And I'm sure she goes to bed late occasionally. Or, you know, she openly talks about that on her podcast. She's like, was meant to go to the gym, didn't fucking go. Meant to do this didn't have the energy she's very open about the fact that she is not fucking perfect at all and that's kind of why she's so personable but in terms of her sleep generally it just is one of those things that makes you feel a little bit silly when you think about her I'm like I can't really use that excuse that like I had work and then I had to see my friends and then I wanted to have a shower and like do this and oh no it's midnight it's like that's a that's a fault that I'm making that's not a lack of time. You'll have the same amount of time, you know. It's just, she's one of those people that, like, I think about how much shit she's getting done and the fact that she goes to bed at nine o'clock. And I think, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Something to think about. Something to think about. Because having loads of awake hours, but not being as alert. You know, your brain is functioning kind of slowly, processing kind of slowly. Because it does when you're tired. Um... Having loads of hours awake does not mean you're getting more shit done, you know, because you're up late. It's like now you have two hours of working on something that you wanted to do really slowly and tiredly. Is that a word? Um, or you could have gone to sleep and you could have done it in probably half the time in the morning because your brain's fucking awake. Do you know what I mean? Like the goal, I feel like, is to be in your prime form. And you can't do that if you're sleeping late. I'm kind of having a go at myself here because I've said this before. I get quite... I lack discipline when it comes to my sleep quite a lot. I go through phases where I'm really strict with it and then it like slips and then I have to like drag myself back into bed and like, <sighs> it is difficult and I understand that. But like, you can't deny that when you've got a good sleep schedule going, everything goes better in your life. You feel better, you get more done, you're happier, you're more social, like just life, life feels completely different when you're not tired. It's insane. And a huge part of sleep hygiene, sorting out your sleep schedule, is your circadian rhythm. You know, you're like your internal clock, your master clock, I think they call it. This is what dictates your urge to sleep, your tiredness. It follows cues of, you know, associations, like mainly obviously light. Um, you know, it sees that and it then creates the urge to go to sleep, etc. Like why jet lag is a thing. Your circadian rhythm has been fucked because you're in a different place. Like the fastest way to get rid of jet lag is to stare outside <laughs> at like 7 8 a.m when you should be waking up you need to just look at the sunlight because you need to train your brain that my god this is morning this is morning i need to look outside and that's how you know th this is how you wake yourself up but hence why having a evening routine where you change your lighting is huge like having your main light on see my fucking family mocked me for this because even in the kitchen if i'm cooking dinner a little bit late main lights off i'm using the little light the little tiny lights my family fucking mocked me for that but i'm like i don't want a main light on when it's late because i need it's bedtime soon like <laughs> I, I don't know it a it just feels cozy and again love to be cozy but b i i need to know that it's evening time like my brain can't have a main light on <laughs> past eight o'clock i'm sorry and also dim lighting you know cozy vibes in the evening helps your body produce sleep promoting hormones like melatonin and shit like it does have benefits and i have a factoid here according to the national sleep foundation your circadian rhythm is most sensitive to light for the first hour after you wake up 
and two hours before you sleep. So aim to dim your lighting 90 minutes to two hours before you go to bed. So the first hour of your morning, this is why if you wake up, don't sit, try not to sit in your bed and go on like your phone or something and stay in bed. I don't personally really like to linger in bed when I wake up. I like to get up. Um, I either, I'm either like, I wanna go back to sleep or I wanna get up. I don't like to just fucking linger personally but like I said for the first hour your circadian rhythm is the most sensitive so that's why getting out and looking in the sunlight and standing outside and getting fresh air and going on a walk or something in the morning basically anything but staring at your fucking phone because your brain now won't necessarily be switched on to the fact that it's morning as soon as you wake up do you know what I mean it will be slower the whole process of waking up will be slower. you'll feel tired for longer this is what I mean like it's huge you know you're kind of biting yourself in the ass again if you if you feel tired or whatever the best thing you can do to get rid of that tiredness is to get up and look outside stand in your garden stand on your balcony look out your window I don't care you know that's gonna wake you up what's not gonna wake you up is lying in your bed for longer this is like feel like a little trick where like you think I'm tired, but I'm just going to lay in bed for like 40 minutes and then get up. You would have felt a lot better if you just got up. But if you sort out your circadian rhythm and you have it on quite a good little system, you should feel, oh my God, the rain. You should feel alert and awake in the morning and you should feel more tired as it gets into the evening. You know, that's how you should feel. Whereas when you wake up and you're fucking exhausted or it's the evening and you're wide awake because you slept maybe you slept in or something that morning or you know that means your circadian rhythm is getting a little bit fucked because really you should wake up feeling fairly alert obviously not necessarily instantly like everyone's different um no one wakes up feeling fucking perfect every day but you should wake up generally feeling kind of awake and alert and you should go to bed feeling kind of tired that's like the, you know the basic how we should be feeling um and a lot of that is your circadian rhythm adjusting to where it should be and not being fucked by things like sleeping late, alcohol, I assume drugs, I do not fucking know, um, caffeine, you know, sunlight, staring at your phone, there's so many things, but I, w I would encourage you to Google about the circadian rhythm and like how you can sort yours out because it's huge, you feel so much better. I again wrote down some facts, <laughs> this was just a little list I made um, of things that help keep your circadian rhythm in a good place sun in the morning eating at regular times exercising trying not to nap dimming the lights in the evening i pretty much just said all that anyway but eating at regular times is just just in the sense that you know again if you have jet lag you sometimes you wake up and you're like i don't want to eat because your brain thinks it's the night and you're like fuck i meant to go out for lunch I don't want to eat this is like 3 a.m for me you know obviously you don't have that much of an extreme when you're at home in your normal time zone but if you you know if you're eating breakfast at the same kind of time lunch at the same kind of time your body's again it's just adjusting to a system and a rhythm and a routine if we always eat at the same time we always kind of wake up at the same time we get used to it and you get so routined you know and again you already have routines you might as well pick some you're always gonna have them like i don't think it's even possible to have absolutely fucking no routine even if it's like the most unhealthy thing ever it's your routine do you know what i mean it's what you do but i think if you're gonna have one which you are you might as well pick one that's actually good for you or that you enjoy or that makes you feel physically nice or mentally nice do you know what I mean but sleep and having a good amount of sleep good quality sleep is huge your sleep literally wipes your brain clean so that it can function it's literally like a windscreen wiper it's crazy again something to google a brain when it's tired and hasn't slept a brain after eight hours of sleep it it's like dirty to clean it's crazy like you function so much better when you've slept it's it's fucking mental actually you know when you're sleeping it kind of systemizes the buildup of information and debris in your brain it flushes your brain out so that it's clean and ready to have a new day full of new information you know so that you can have a decent memory you can remember things you can problem solve with better reasoning skills you know your social skills your social battery how nice of a fucking person you're gonna be like there's obviously all these scientific things but there's also like it makes you not be a bitch 
you know. But it does, it removes all of the debris and, you know, like the toxic proteins and shit that if they're not getting washed out and they're building up in your brain, that is so heavily linked to getting diseases like Alzheimer's and shit. You know, sleep keeps you healthy. It keeps you fucking physically healthy and mentally healthy. And I think that's why it seems so silly that it's something that we all slack on and that we all kind of get so lazy with actually sleeping at the right time we all sleep kind of late and we go on our phones and blah 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 but it's like again it's kind of one of those things that current you is having a nice time but future you is so much more prone to getting a fucking disease do you know what i mean and again like i said at the start your life is made up of how you spend your days that's what you're doing with your life that's your life do you know what i mean and if you're again kind of talking to myself here too not just you. If you are sleeping kind of late and you're kind of not on your best form quite often, you could easily spend a whole year completely differently than how you would have spent it if you fucking went to bed earlier. And it seems so minor. That's what I mean, going to bed late every now and then. But like, it builds up and you can get so much less shit done. Like, it is mental to think one year you could have like, I don't know, just done hit a couple of the goals that you wanted to hit but if you sorted your sleep schedule out you could be like 10 goals further you could you could be so much further ahead with the shit you want if you slept at the right times because it has such a ripple effect of your energy levels how happy you are how motivated you are how disciplined you are how lazy you get but without proper sleep you're essentially going into the next day with like a dirty brain do you know what i mean like it hasn't cleaned it's not fresh it's not ready for the day it's got half of like fucking like toxic shit and dirt in it <laughs> like this is so scientific but that's essentially what's happening and you're trying to then go and be productive and get all this shit done you physically can't people think probably this sounds like a lot of effort and it sounds really fucking difficult but i think once you get this down it becomes a routine you're not thinking about it you're just you just do it you just do your routine the same way right now you have a routine that you're doing you're not it's not taking you effort it's just a fucking routine you do it without even thinking about it you get to a place where you don't even have to think about going to bed at the right time you don't have to think about setting up for the next day it's, it, you become so habitual with it that you're now living your life in a completely different state than you would have been because you're kind of working like a fucking machine do you know what i mean like you're doing this shit for yourself without needing the willpower and the discipline you just do it and i think that's why like i said it sounds like effort it's it makes your life so much easier if you have routines and systems that work for you your life is becoming so much easier for yourself than it would be if you didn't you're like you're kind of making your life like a daily fucking struggle if you don't have routines and habits that you that work for you but yeah sleep is huge Go to bed, go to bed on time, <laughs> wake up on time. Again, no one's perfect. Um, I am in no way trying to make this sound like I'm fucking perfect, but no one is. No one is, even Mel Robbins isn't. The people that have all these fucking huge shows and podcasts and books out, they still go to bed late sometimes. Like, everyone does. But probably not very often, if I'm honest. They probably don't do that very often. Um, but, yeah, very interesting stuff to me um i hope you enjoyed i hope this was helpful and maybe interesting and maybe you're gonna think about what your current evening routine is when you kind of sleep and you can start to then kind of edit it once you start to look at your routines realistically and honestly you can then start to edit them and be like hey that doesn't work that doesn't work i want to change this i want to change that and you can start to work through trial and error try some different routines see what sticks see what works see what feels good and you can find that kind of sweet spot for yourself. Something that's gonna stick and something that's gonna benefit you and something you'll enjoy. Because I love my evening routine. Oh my God, I fucking love it. I, every day I wake up and I'm like, can't wait. Can't wait to go back to bed and do my evening routine. <laughs> like everything in the middle of the day is just time passing before I can go back to bed. <laughs> I'm joking, kind of. Anyway, thank you for listening and I will talk to you next week.